Good morning. Thank you for joining the uh, coming to our ministries once again for another beautiful and blessed uh, Wednesday morning that the Lord has allowed us to see. As always, we thank you for all your continued prayer, love, and support of this ministry. And we want you to know that this ministry loves you. We are praying for you and we believe in God for big blessings and greater blessings in your life. At this time, we would like to make an announcement before we get started. We're so excited that God has bestowed upon us the opportunity of changing the name of this ministry. Uh, it's been coming to our ministries for over a year now, but God is leading us in a better and a different direction. And so now the name of the ministry will be God's Way Ministry. We still want you to come as you are, but let's do things God's way. Amen. We're excited about God's Way Ministry. We're excited about the doors that God is opening for God's Way Ministry. We thank, uh, we thank Pastor Dave. We thank Pastor Corey for all that they have done in sowing into this ministry to get it to the point to where it is and to take it further than it is right now. We just thank you all for your continued prayers. And like we said before, uh, we thank my wife for always being here to do the technical side of it and getting things up and going like we needed to. So just keep praying for us as we are praying for you. And as always, we say this is a day that the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because God is good all the time and all the time. God is truly good. Let us get right back into this series that we have been dealing with, and we've been dealing with uh, talking about faith. Faith in a God that never fails is our main theme. Faith in a God that never fails. And our theme scripture has been Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. And so we thank God for all that he's done for us and all that he's continuously to show us in our lives as we go through this particular series. Uh, today, we're going to be dealing with Jeremiah chapter 20, and we're only going to deal with verses 1 through 13. Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 1 through 13. And our text for today will be, I can't give up now. I can't give up now. Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 1 said, When the priest, Parshur, son of Emir, the official in charge of the temple of the Lord, heard Jeremiah prophesying these things, he had Jeremiah the prophet beaten and put in the stocks at the upper gate of Benjamin at the Lord's temple. The next day, when Parshur released, released him from the stocks, Jeremiah said to him, The Lord's name for you, it, for you, is not Pashir, but terror on every side. For this is what the Lord says. I will make you a terror to yourself and to all your friends. With your own eyes, you will see them fall by the sword of their enemies. I will give all Judah into the hands of the king of Babylon, who will carry them away to Babylon or put them to the sword. I will deliver all the wealth of this city into the hands of their enemies all its products, all its values, and all the treasures of the kings of Judah. They will take it away as plunder and carry it off to Babylon. And you, Pasher, and all who live in your house will go into exile into Babylon. There you will die and be buried, you and all your friends to whom you have prophesied lies. You deceived me, Lord, and I was deceived. You overpowered me and prevailed. I am ridiculed. All day long, everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I cry out, proclaiming violence and destruction. So the word of the Lord has brought me insult and reproach all day long. But if I say I will not mention his word or speak any more in his name, his word is in my heart like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones. I will, I will, I am weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. I hear many whispers, terror on every side. Denounce him, let's denounce him. All my friends are waiting for me to slip, saying perhaps he will be deceived. Then we will prevail over him and take over revenge on it, take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior. So my persecutors will stumble and not prevail. They will fail and be thoroughly disgraced. Their dishonor will never be forgotten. Lord Almighty, you 
who examine the righteous and probe the heart of and man. Let me see your vengeance on them, for to you I have committed my call. Sing to the Lord, give praise to the Lord. He rescues the life of the needy from the hand of the wicked. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we thank and we praise you for this great and glorious opportunity to come before this your people, Lord God. And as always, we ask you to hide us behind the cross that they will only hear and see you, Lord, that you will get the glory, the honor, and the praises out of everything that is said and done here. Father God, we ask you to grab us all by the reins of our minds, Lord. Help us to stay focused on your word, your will, and your way. Father, come on in and visit with us right now, Lord, that we will hear a word from you, Father. We need you, and we can't make it without you. Bless our time here together, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. As we look at this very familiar passage from Jeremiah, and we talk about the I can't give up now, when we look at Jeremiah, Jeremiah was in a state after being beaten, after being persecuted, after being talked about and going through all Jeremiah had gone through. Jeremiah was sitting there thinking in his mind. And sometimes the devil will play tricks on you and have you thinking that God doesn't love you or God hasn't been taking care of you or God hadn't delivered you or God hadn't done anything for you. And Jeremiah was sitting there and he was saying, Lord, you didn't deceive me. I'm going through this. I'd have been beaten. I'd have been persecuted. I'd have been talked about. I've been put down. I've gone through this. I've gone through that. And all because I'm trying to preach your word, all because I'm trying to share your word with others, all because I'm trying to bring people into knowing who you are. And every time I'm doing this now, I'm being persecuted. People are talking about me and putting me down. I'm suffering. I'm, I'm dealing with this that and the other. And a lot of us in our lives feel the same way Jeremiah feels at this point. We've gone through the same thing. We get to the point to where things seem to just boggle us down so much. We're dealing with the past. We're dealing with the present. We're dealing with things that hadn't even happened yet. But because we, we're in this state of mind, we're looking to the future about what's going to happen then. We're dealing with so much. We're dealing with family problems, church problems, all kinds of stuff that we're dealing with. And we get to the point to where we begin to question our faith in God. We begin to question our faith in the one that woke us up this morning. We begin to question our faith in the one that died on the cross for our sin. We begin to question our faith in the one that has brought us thus far. We start questioning, why am I going through this? We start questioning him. Lord, I, I think you deceived me. You had me thinking that everything was going to be okay. You had me thinking that you had my back. You had me thinking that you were going to take care of me. Jeremiah was sitting there and Jeremiah was just going through all of this. You deceived me, Lord. In verse seven, he says, you overpowered me and prevail. I am ridiculed. I'm ridiculed all the day long. Everyone is mocking me. Everybody is talking about me. Everybody is putting me down. Everybody is questioning my motives. Everybody is talking about this, that, and the other. They, the old folks say they're running my name all up and down the highway. They're putting all my business out there. And Lord, the only thing I'm trying to do is live for you. And I've learned that when you're trying to live for God, the devil will use anything and everything to stop you. He'll use your family members. He'll use your friends. He'll use church members. He'll even use your dog to try to stop you from serving God, to try to stop you from following the plan of God. But that's where your faith comes in then. When you got faith in God, and I'm talking about really have faith in God, you know what God has done for you. You know where God has brought you from. You know how he's delivered you. You know how he's opened doors for you. You know how he's made a way for you. So why do you ever get to the point to where you feel like you want to give up? But when you get to that point, to where you feel like you want to give up, when you feel like you want to throw in the towel, remember what Job went through. Remember how Job was stripped of so much. Job almost lost everything that he had. He lost all of his valuable possessions. And then his wife came to him. And she was like, you just all a curse God and die. And Job was like, wait a minute. I know we're going through. And I know we're dealing with some stuff. I know that we're losing things. And, and, and this is going on. And that is going on. He said, but woman, you sound foolish. He said, you don't sound like my wife. 
You don't sound like the woman that I met. He said, how can I curse God and die? God has been so good to us. God has made a way for us. Job said, no, I can't give up on him now. I can't lose my faith now. And it's easy to happen because why? We are human. And in human nature, when we see things in the flesh, we get to the point to where we get discouraged and we're like, Lord, I can't take this no more. Lord, I can't deal with this no more. I can't deal with the lies. I can't deal with the persecution. I can't deal with being put down no more. I can't deal with the sickness. I can't deal with the trials and the tribulation. But in all of that, if you would let your mind run back and you see how far God has brought you, you would say, I can't give up now. Why? Because my faith is in God. My faith is not in man. My faith is not in mama. It's not in daddy. It's not in sister or brother. My faith is in God. It's not in the house. It's not in the car. Why? Because the house didn't die for me. The house didn't wake me up this morning. The car did not start me on my way. It was the Lord Jesus that did it. So that's where my faith needs to be. Your bank account not going to take care of you. I don't care how you look at it. I don't care how much you got in there or how little you got in there. Your bank account is not going to take care of you. It's God the one that takes care of you. So while Jeremiah was sitting there, Jeremiah was discouraged. Jeremiah was getting upset. Jeremiah was going through a mental point in his life where Jeremiah was having a mental breakdown. And in Jeremiah's mental breakdown, Jeremiah began to wonder, why am I still preaching? Why am I still teaching? Why am I still trying to get people to know you and I'm steady being persecuted? I'm steady being talked about. I'm steady being put down. But even in the midst of all of that, Jeremiah reminds me of a story about a young lady that had gotten to the point to where she had gone through so much and she was ready to turn her back on God. And as she was in the process of thinking about turning her back, on God, she sat there and she said, Lord, whenever I needed something, you were right there. And it's just giving you the short version of the story. And she went through and she started thinking about the goodness of God, how that when she was homeless, God made sure she had a roof over her head, how when she was hungry, God made sure she had food, how when she was going through this and going through that, God always made a way and she finally stopped. And she said, if God has done all of this for me, there's no way I can turn my back on him now. There is no way I can give up now. Why? Because he's been faithful to me. And since he's been faithful to me, I got to be faithful to him. Glory to God. I got to stand on the word of God. I don't know about anybody else, but I, I know some preachers can identify with me. There have been some times when you wanted to give up and you wanted to stop preaching and you wanted to leave it alone and just throw your hands up. And we've all gotten to this point to where Jeremiah was. The people are not listening. They got itching ears, but they don't want to hear what I'm preaching about. They don't want to hear the fact that if you commit sin, you're going to hell. They don't want to hear that. They want to hear the only part. They want to hear all things work together. They don't want to hear all the rest of it. They don't want to hear the fact that it says all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. They don't want to hear all of it. They just want to hear stuff that's going to make them happy, that's going to give them some joy. But they don't want to hear the real true meaning that the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Jeremiah got the way he wanted to stop preaching. But then Jeremiah was reminded in verse 9, but if I say I will not mention his word or speak any more in his name, his word is in my heart like a fire. He said, a fire shut up in my bones. So in other words, when I begin to reflect and I begin to think on the goodness of God, no matter how much trouble I'm dealing with, no matter how many tears I've been crying, no matter how much pain I've had to deal with, no matter how much persecution that I've had to go through, that fire that shut up in my bone reminds me that God has always been there. God has always taken care of you and my faith rekindles. My faith stands strong. Why? Because I know in whom I trust. I know in whom I believe. If you don't believe me, look at the story of the woman with the issue of blood. The woman with the issue of blood had been living and dealing with this for 12 long years. And she could have just given up. But the woman with the issue of blood had enough faith to realize if I could just get to Jesus, I know everything will be all right. 
She could have made them in her mind. I, I, I'm going to give up. All the doctors can't help me. My friends can't help me. My family can't help me. But then she realized I got faith in a God that never failed. And if I can just get to him, I know everything will be all right. When she got down there where he was, there were so many people there. So many people out there. She could have given up. Said, Lord, I, I, I can't get through this crowd. I'm hurting too bad. I got too much going on. There's too much going on in my mind. My body is tore up. I, I just don't have the strength to press through this. But she didn't. And I'm here to tell somebody else, I know there's a lot on your plate. I know you're dealing with some stuff. But I'm here to tell you, just keep pressing your way through. Don't give up. Just keep holding on to God's unchanging hand. And he will see you through it. The woman with the issue of blood pressed through that crowd. And when she pressed through that crowd by faith, she made it to Jesus. And when she got to Jesus, she just touched the hem of his garment. And when she touched the hem of his garment, immediately, immediately, her body was healed. Think about it. If she had him given up, she would have never made it to the healing. If she had him given up, she would have never been delivered. And then I learned one thing. Your testimony is not just for you. It's to help others. When you share your testimony of how God has delivered you, when you share your faith with others, it helps others to realize that, hey, I need to serve this same God. I need to understand that if God brought her through, he can bring me through. If God stopped him from being an alcoholic, he can stop me. If God delivered him from drugs, he can deliver me too. So what? I can't give up on a God like that. The lame man and his friends, in Luke chapter 5, verses 17 through 31, that lame man was laying there, had no way of getting to his healing. Couldn't walk. But he knew Jesus was in town. So he got his friends and they picked him up and they carried him down to where Jesus was. And when they got down there again, great multitude. Have you ever been at the point to where you're striving for something and everything stands in the way. Everything is getting in the way. People are talking against it. Your family don't believe in it. And you just at the point to where you know like, well, Lord, I, I don't know what else to do. I'm right here at the gate. But so many oppositions are coming up. The loan fell through. The business venture fell through. I got sick. My wife's sick. This is going on. That's going on. Lord, maybe this is not for me. And it's not that it's not for you. We have to learn to press through the, the crowd. We got to learn to press through the mess. And when they got there, they saw all of that, but it didn't stop them. They went on the roof, tore the rooftop off, and lowered this man down at Jesus' feet just so he could be healed, just so he could be delivered and made whole. I'm here to tell you, you can't give up in the midst of your stuff. You can't give up in the midst of your storm. You have to activate your faith. Again, I think scripture says, faith is the substance of things hopeful and the evidence of things not seen. I may can't see it in the physical, but in the spiritual, I know it's there. Why? Because my hope and my faith is in God. It's not in what I can see. It's not in what I can touch. But it's in a God that has all power in his hand. It's in a God that's a way maker, a miracle worker, who's a promise keeper, a light in the darkness. It, my faith is in him. And it's something about having faith in God. That when you're sad, all you got to do is go to him and talk to him. When you're weary, all you got to do is look to the hills and what comes is your help. All of your help come from the Lord. So I'm here to tell you, you got to grab hold of this I can't give up faith. I know it's home. There's a lot that has gone on, not just this year, but in the past few years. And God has brought you through all of it. God has made a way for you. God has seen you through. So why do you want to get to this point now? Because things seem to be a little rough. Because things seem to be a little harder than usual. Why do you want to give up now? God didn't give up on you. He didn't give up on you in your sins. He didn't give up on you in your mess. 
Why do you want to give up now? Because you got a little trouble coming in. I'm going to tell you this and we're going to get out of here. There was a daughter and her dad traveling through a storm. The preacher had just got through preaching and they were on their way home. And as they were on their way home, it started to rain. The little girl said, Daddy, do you want me to pull over? The daddy said, no, keep on going. So it started raining a little bit harder and thunder started to roll in it. She said, Daddy, it's raining a little harder and the thunder is, is, is rolling. Do you want me to pull over? And he said, no, keep on going. Well, it got to the point where it was raining so hard the little girl could barely see. And the lightning was flashing. The thunder was rolling. She was looking around her and people were pulling over. She said, Daddy, I, I can hardly see. And, and, and I, I know that people are pulling over. Do you want to pull over and stop? The daddy said, no, keep on going. So they kept going until they got out of the storm. And then when they got out of the storm a little way, the daddy said, pull over. And she said, Daddy, why do you want me to pull over now? He said, just pull over. I want to show you something. They pulled over and they got out the car. He said, now look back. When she looked back, she said, okay. He said, see all those people that are sitting on the side of the road? He said, she said, yeah, Dad. He said, they're still sitting in the storm. But because you didn't give up, because we kept pushing, because we kept pressing, we are out of the storm. God delivered us. And I'm here to tell you, because you keep pushing, because you keep pressing, because you keep holding on, because you keep trusting in God, because you keep believing in God. I wasn't trying to get like this, but God just moved right now. Because you keep holding on to it, I promise you that when you come out of the storm, because you didn't give up, God will bless you. God will show you why I wanted you to keep going. God will show you why I delivered you through the storm. God will show you why he brought you to the point of where you are now. He'll show you that you can't give up. No matter how hard the rain is, no matter how loud the thunder is, no matter how the lightning may be flashing, you got to keep pressing. You got to keep holding on to your faith and you can't give up in the midst of your storm. Continue to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Continue to trust God. Continue to hold on to your faith. Because your faith is what's going to get you through. Your faith is what's going to turn things around in your life. Why? Because you got faith in God, not faith in yourself. God bless you, and we love you. We look forward to seeing you again, Lord's willing, on next Wednesday as we pick right back up, continuously talking about faith. Because a lot of us are on a faith walk. There are things that are going on in our life that we may not understand. But I'm here to tell you, just put your faith and hope in Jesus Christ, and he will. Turn it all around. We love you. God bless you. And have a good day.